Once upon a time, I thought about making a video that was talking about the top five worst books I've ever read, but I abandoned that idea. Why? Because what's even worse than the worst book? The most disappointing book. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Hey, welcome back to BellTube, everyone. I am Brian Bell. If it's your first time here, welcome on in. We talk a lot about science fiction, fantasy, and sometimes lit RPG here on the channel. Today's topic is going to be five of the most disappointing experiences I've ever had a reader in this genre. And I've got five books here that I think some will surprise you, some may not, but they're definitely worth discussing because they were tremendous disappointments to me. And I also want to share this with everybody as well. Just because these five books happen to be personal disappointments for me, I understand fully well that these may be some of your favorite books. So don't let my opinion, you know, change your mind. If this is something that you absolutely love, then it's a win. It's a win for you. It's a win for the author. It's a win for everybody. I'm just basically stating my opinions here. So please take it with a big grain of salt. All of this is very subjective. So we're gonna start off with number five. We're gonna work our way down to number one. Number one is easily the most disappointing and awful book I've ever read. Numbers two through five pale in comparison. So let's get going. Let's talk about number five, and that book is Armada by Ernest Klein. Armada is kind of what you get if you shoddily mix the last Starfighter movie with Ender's Game, throw in a ton of 80s nostalgic references, and you get basically what turns out to be Armada. This is not a good book. Now, there's going to be other books on this list that have some redeeming qualities. This doesn't happen to be one of them. The reason why it's not even higher on my disappointed list is because I didn't have a whole lot of faith in this book to begin with. But let's just say I'm not sure if it's Ernest Klein or I think his friends call him Ernie Klein that's behind the problems with this book or if it's his publisher. Because essentially what he's done is he took the success that happened with Ready Player One and he tried to make it into a new sci-fi story. I don't know if he intentionally went out and tried to copy, you know, Ender's Game or The Last Starfighter. But what I do know is he copied his formula when it comes to all these crazy 80s references that he did in Ready Player One. Now, again, that was my jam growing up. I grew up in the 80s, so I'm very familiar with it. I liked Ready Player One because it had all those references and it hadn't been done already a million times. But to see it happen again from the exact same author, what a colossal disappointment. And what it really meant was that I was examining his writing more than just the novelty and the nostalgic factor that I got. And as you take a deep look into Ernest Klein, you know, prose, it's not that good. So yeah, we're gonna say number five is Armada. I don't recommend this book. Ready Player One isn't bad, I actually. Like I said, I liked it for me. I don't even know if it's for everyone. Let's move on. So if you've been watching BellTube at all, I don't think this one's gonna come as any surprise. In fact, this was on the actual thumbnail. But number four is Unsold by Will White. This is cultivation fantasy. It's progression fantasy. I don't consider it lit RPG. It's more on the cultivation side. But I had so many problems with this book. It took me quite a long time in my progression fantasy journey to even get to Cradle. You know, I've been reading lit RPG for probably the better part of 10 years. And the fact that Cradle is so widely spread throughout the fantasy community, it is a bit of a shock that it took me this long to get there. And I kind of figured out why once I got into Unsold, which is book one. Now our lead character here, Wei Shi Linden, He's growing up kind of in this Asian inspired little village and he doesn't have any powers, but everybody else around him does. And it's a little depressing to be honest with you. So we're sort of rooting for good things to happen to him, 
but not a whole lot does in the first book, which made it disappointing, right? We want compelling protagonists. This was just a protagonist that had one bad thing happen after the next, and then nothing really happened of any significance, and the book ends. So it's a pretty short book. Clearly, the author, Will White, had a plan in mind that he was gonna make a long series. My big issue with this, and with Cradle in general, is that you'll find most people say, hey, well, you gotta get to at least book three before it gets any good. They're not kidding when it comes to Cradle. Books one, books two, and books three, in my opinion, should have been one book. If there are books out there that are 800, 900 pages in the fantasy realm, Will White could have easily done that, and maybe we would have had a decent book. I don't even think it would have been that good, but as far as disappointments go, to know that Cradle has sold as much as it has, and to know how beloved it is for a lot of people, yeah, it was definitely a disappointment for me. I was hoping for a lot more. Before we get into number three, if you like the video, or even if you don't like it and just wanna help me out, hit that like button. And if you wanna find out more about what we're doing on the channel and you wanna see our whole catalog and get updates as new ones are released, think about hitting that subscribe button. It does help new people find our channel and we've got a great community here and we'd love you to be part of it. Let's get into book number three on our list and that is going to be this is a crazy one. I know this is gonna be a favorite of a lot of yours, so I apologize in advance, but this is N.K. Jemisin's The Fifth Season. This book won the 2016 Hugo Award. It was a nominee finalist, I believe, in the 2015 Locus Awards. Yeah, I know it's highly acclaimed, and my disappointment level was not about the prose or the writing style. It doesn't take very much into the book, probably page one or page two, to realize that N.K. Jemisin is a talented author. There's no doubt there. My disappointment was in the story and in the lack of characterizations. I just didn't care about the characters. I didn't care what happened to the planet that they were on. And most especially disappointing for me, and I didn't really realize this until the very end of the book, and no, there's no spoilers here, but there's a great mystery involved here. And I sussed it out kind of like around chapter three. And for me, that was a great disappointment because I love when my expectations are subverted. I love when authors throw a curveball. But when I see that curveball coming, it's just a huge bummer. I know a lot of you love it. It didn't work for me. My third most disappointing book that I've read in the genre, N.K. Jemisin's The Fifth Season. Okay, coming in at number two today on my most disappointing list is a book that I really really was disappointed in because it's the third book of a trilogy and I had grown some expectations from book one and two. This is The Hunger Games book three called Mockingjay. Now, boy was I disappointed and it has been a long time since I've read this book so I don't remember off the top of my head all the specific things that disappointed me but I do know that there was those love triangles that I just can't stand in this type of fiction I know that there was a lot of meaningless death it felt extraordinarily preachy to me so in books one and book two we get this dystopian future and you know these people from the different you know they're not villages I can't remember what they're called they're sectors or or something like that and it's broadcast to everybody in the community it's broadcast to everybody in society and you know I kind of liked how they did it I loved that game show host by the way I can't remember his name if some of you in the comments want to remind me what his name is that would be great but boy mocking Jay ugh, meaningless deaths characters that are wholly unsympathetic we've got resolution that just leaves us kind of going what that was kind of a head scratcher and at the end of the day, I feel like Suzanne Collins, the author, is basically telling us, you know, war is bad and people die and war changes people. And yeah, we get it, but it was so off theme to books one and books two that I'm not so sure she even knew where she wanted to take the story, but the publishing company maybe said, hey, you gotta wrap this up. I don't know, if that was the plan from day one, then, I really miscalculated when I started the series because I don't remember ever putting down a book three, which is gonna be the grand finale, and going, well, what was that? Because, yeah, 
total disappointment, that was number two. And here we are at the number one most disappointing book in the science fiction fantasy genre that I've ever read. I know some of my personal friends and some of my booktube friends consider this to be a top 10 book of all time. And that surprises me because the most disappointing book I have ever read in the genre, which I also think is the worst book that was ever put out in the genre for reasons I'll get into in a minute, is none other than The Magicians by Lev Grossman. I could not stand this book for all kinds of reasons. The first being that it took me no time at all to figure out that Lev Grossman knows how to write. So it wasn't, you know, the disappointment in how did I pick up this book that is clearly written by an amateur. Absolutely not. The guy has good prose, but boy, can he not write his way out of the closet when it comes to writing characters. The plot was so boring. And talk about disappointment. This was sold to me, and I think it was probably sold to a lot of you, as this is kind of like adults Hogwarts, or if the Hogwarts kids went to college, and that college was called Break Bills, and you know, they developed into mature adults, and what's the next chapter in this magical university story? It couldn't be farther away from Harry Potter if you tried. Harry Potter all had compelling characters. Whether you loved them or you hated them, you absolutely knew what they were all about. But the characters in The Magicians are the most unsympathetic, flat, disingenuous. I wanted to root against them the entire time. And there's sections of this book that are truly copied right out of other famous literature. Before I even get into my final thoughts on this, I found a review on Goodreads several years ago that I pulled up today that I want to read to you because I'm in complete agreement with what Mr. Urban is saying here. Lev Grossman has written an anti-novel, meaning that where most novels start from the premise of a character who grows over the course of the story, changing in response to challenges and realizations and maturation, this novel features a protagonist who is wholly passive, narcissistic, spoiled, and unaware of his basic unpleasantness, and who remains so throughout the story. The young adult Quentin is a proclaimed and self-proclaimed genius who has chosen to attend a college for magic called Break Bills. Contrary to his characterization by the author, he never does anything or says anything remotely clever or insightful in the course of the story. There are sacrifices, suffering, and loss, but nary a lesson learned by our poor dejected Quentin, who comes through the other side as obnoxious and boring as ever. And so it seems the joke is on us. Grossman has dared us to care about his characters, thrill at their adventures, and learn from their mistakes. But in the end, there are no characters, no adventures, and the mistake was ours in picking up this ridiculous book to begin with. Yeah, I can't agree more with that review. And part of this book, by the way, is he's got this fascination with these books that are about a magical land called Fillory, which they get to by way of a magic button. That's the part that I'm talking about that is just taken and lifted right out of Narnia. C.S. Lewis must have been going, what is this guy doing to me? And it's just so obvious. There's just nothing great about this book. You know, I will share with you, people have asked me about my tattoos. So here's one of them. This is what Fillory ought to have looked like, right? This is a magical portal to a magical land. There is none of that going on in this book. Oh my God, what a disappointment. So that's going to lead us to our one for the road today. And that is about disappointment. And what do we do when that happens? So inevitably in life, we're going to be disappointed about some things, whether it's something as simple as reading or something very important in your life, you're going to be disappointed. My advice, move on. Feel that disappointment for a minute because it's kind of good in my view to feel all the emotions that are available to us on the planet, even the kind of lousy ones. 
So feel it for a second, understand what it feels like to be disappointed, and then move on to something else. The quicker we can move on from disappointment, the more we're gonna get to things that we're excited about, the more we're gonna find satisfaction, and the more we're gonna have great results and be happy for the path that we chose instead of disappointment. I wanna know what some of your most disappointing books are because this is not an exhaustive list. I didn't wanna make a full top 10 today because I knew the community would have comments both on my selections and the disappointments of your own throw them in the comments let's discuss i look forward to doing that with you all there and of course here's your fortune